My name is Nicholas Wilson. I'm an anti-corruption campaigner and currently an independent parliamentary candidate for the constituency of Hastings and Rye, competing against Home Secretary Amber Rudd. You can't discuss these terror attacks without reference to the situation in the Middle East and particularly our, our selling of arms to Saudi Arabia. So, but as soon as I started talking about this, and more particularly HSBC's involvement in Saudi Arabia as well, um, the bell, the chairman started ringing the bell, which mean, meant I had to stop. So I said to him, well, what's going on? I've only just started. And he said, you're, you're going off topic. I said, OK, let's get back to uh, law and order. So then I started talking about Amber Rudd shutting down the serious fraud office, which is very pertinent to something that I'm involved with because financial crime is the kind of thing that they investigate. So the, the, the plan is to shut down the, the SFO um, and, and so that all fraud prosecutions will go through the National Crime Agency, of which, which is not independent. The SFO is independent of any political control, but the National Crime Agency isn't, which means that Amber Rudd effectively, as Home Secretary, will decide who is prosecuted. Well, I don't think the Serious Fraud Office is particularly efficient. Um, but to get rid of them, I mean, they are the only independent um, crime organisation. I mean, I've, I've had my own problems with them. Um, they haven't helped me at all. Um, but um, it will be a disaster because that because that then all prosecutions will be the responsibility of the National Crime Agency, which is the responsibility of the Home Secretary, which will be Amber Rudd, or, or, or she might be Prime Minister by then. But um, it's disastrous because that we need. I mean, the FCA. Um, I'm sure the FCA and the SFO, the Financial Conduct Authority and the Serious Fraud Office, they have connections, and but they. I'm sure they collude also to keep down anything that's going to be politically too dangerous, like HSBC, for example. But at least, you know, the, F the SFO went after Rolls-Royce. At least they do some things. It, I mean, I know it's only going to be what's politically expedient for the government at the time, but at least they, they make a show of being independent and doing something. But if they didn't exist, there would be nothing. I mean, you know, the Rolls Royce would never have happened. I mean, there will never, there would never be any investigations because it would be down to the politicians. I think Amber Rudd being prime minister would be disastrous. Um, she's racist. She's small-minded. She's um, a, an ex-banker. She's got very dodgy business backgrounds. She's had companies that went into bankruptcy. She had companies registered in the Bahamas. She had business co-directors going to prison for fraud. I mean, in a way, she's an ideal Tory prime minister because that's that's their modus operandi. I mean, I've always said that you know, Tory party, or, or in fact, the whole, this this country the, the, is based is based on corruption. The whole, you know, it's the most corrupt country in the world, according to Roberto Saviano the Mafia expert, and, and I agree. So in that sense, she's a perfect Prime Minister. Um, but the, the, whole, but the, point, the point of my campaign is to try and get that kind of corruption out of politics. You know, I, if I was sitting in the House of Commons, I would challenge, and, and I would have parliamentary privilege, and I would challenge people with the, a, you know, connections to the private health care, to MPs who are privatising the health service, for example. I mean, all of these corrupt connections need to be exposed and dealt with, and that's why I'm standing. The problem with financial crime or, or the dealing with financial crime in this country is a joke because the F, the Financial Conduct Authority, have said to me, we don't deal with standalone fraud. They don't prosecute standalone, what they call standalone. So if it's just fraud, they don't prosecute it. But when, in my case, I go to the City of London Police Economic Crime Department, who are the specialist police force in the country to deal with economic crime. They said to me, in my case particularly, oh, it's a regulatory matter, you have to go to the FCA. So there's one, they're just passing the buck between themselves. But last year it was announced by the City of London Police, through a decision that seems to have been made by the College of Policing, 
this is so it's, it was, was it's not legislation this is nothing to do with parliament it's just a policing decision that now the city of london police will not be the first port of call to investigate financial crime the fca is but they've already told me they don't investigate standalone fraud uh, what the city of london police have also decided now to do is to outsource their investigation into financial crime to companies like clifford chance who are big city solicitors who act for the banks it's a joke the bank's own solicitors are going to investigate allegations of fraud against them because it's being privatised. Fraud investigation is essentially being privatised. I have an analogy. and When MPs are campa campaigning, and even, even when they are MPs, but, but particularly for the election campaign, the, I see there's this lake of corruption swirling lake of corruption and MPs are just skimming stones across the surface to see who can skim the furthest stone. That's to me they're just skimming the surface and, and I want to dive in and deal with what is underneath the surface because it's not pleasant. <laughs>